With the global energy dynamics changing and natural gas growing faster than both oil and coal, what are the impacts for trading? I think LNG has a huge step forward to make here. I mean, you could, there are a lot of topics you can cover just on that. Um, I think coal has been a bit of a tricky situation. Most banks are a little bit hesitant to finance coal projects these days, which serves the LNG business well. Um, and I think you're going to see, continue to see a lot of growth in the LNG market, particularly in the development of a liquid trading market and pricing hubs that match that. Considering today's market, what would you say is the most attractive natural gas pricing index? I don't know that any one of them is more attractive than the others. I think if you're a European, you're looking at TTF and NBP, and it's really a, ma a question of how you manage your risk. Uh, I think we need more development of several gas markets, LNG pricing indices, that allow you to look at the different areas, the sources of supply versus the sources of demand, and start to see them correlate to one another. And then you will really develop a more robust trading platform and a, and a gas on gas pricing mechanism. How will LNG contracts develop in the future? If you look at so far what's transacted in 2017, it's been mostly Pacific Basin, uh, oil linked type of contracts. I think more and more customers are hesitant to sign 20 year deals. And I think the entire industry is going to involve, evolve into a more market-based, shorter-term contracting structure. And what that market base means today, again, is still part of the uncertainty. And I think a lot of people need to think on that subject to try to figure out the future of gas and LNG pricing. In the next five years, what direction would you like to see the global gas and LNG industry go? I think it's important that we develop more of this liquid market. If you consider that by 2020, you'll have between 15 and 18 cargoes loading every single day around the world. You are effectively going to have a de facto floating storage of about 900 BCF at any given point. So you will have tremendous amount of opportunity to optimize around the various positions around the world. And I think I would like to see the cooperation between buyer and sellers work such that we can take advantage of this optimization. You really shouldn't end up having too many cargoes from the Atlantic Gulf Coast of the US going over to Asia through the canal. One, you have bottleneck limitations, and two, uh, you have robust supply over there. So, so long as we work it all together and pricing becomes more uniform, I think you have a tremendous opportunity to have an extremely efficient market. What are you most looking forward to at Gas Tech 2018? Well, I think one of the things you always look forward to is seeing familiar faces, friends that you don't get to see very much, the networking opportunities it presents. But also, it really gives you a sense of how the industry is feeling, what the mood is. The leaders have to say, because you always put out you know, the best and the brightest in the business, and you give them a very nice platform for them to speak and talk and what's going on in the business. And I look very much forward to Gas Tech 2018 in the lovely city of Barcelona, where you have a lot of people who are already in this industry for a long time. Um, and so I think it'll be a great venue for, for, for such an event.